Hi, welcome. It's a Danny Paints video, but different because it's not just over there, it's here. And we've got a bag and the camera's there. What is this doing? <coughs> this is a challenge from Richard, AKA Tricky Dicky, AKA Richard Scott from Throw the Dice Geelong, which is a wonderful little gaming store in Geelong. If you haven't been there, you should go there. It's great. It's got lots of stuff. Everyone's really friendly and they play all the good games. Oh, we're just going to open it. Alrighty. Oh, yeah, sick. Check this out. And it's, look at this, look at this, look at this. Eight inch interior for Infinity the Game Armory. With like a hex pattern floor, which looks rad. Look at that, that's dope. Like hex patterns, super cyberpunky. Uh, this is gonna be sick. Let's get to it. Obviously started with a black prime, but didn't film it because to be honest, it's not that interesting. After that, we get into the walls. This print has a lot of textures and panels and interesting stuff, so you could actually go buck wild with the color choices. And I went with gray for reasons to be discovered later. So I start with a mix of neutral gray and black through the airbrush, leaving just the darkest recesses in shadow. The next color through the airbrush is just the neutral gray by itself. I'm making sure not to use too high of a value here so that the other stuff I have planned can stand out more. And I'm also only hitting about the top 50% of the wall. The idea for the exterior walls is just a brutalist lump of grey concrete. From here I move on to Old Mate Spongy. Rip off the end of any bit of foam so it's rough and unevenly textured and then dip it in some sky grey. I make sure to only leave a little bit on the sponge when I start to stipple it on and you can see straight away how this is really going to help sell a rough concrete texture. With all that done, I want to get a little bit of early weathering in with streaking grime. Basically just panel lining the exterior and only doing a very minimal application on the interior. I found that the weather is generally on the outside. The next steps is when my secret plan is to be unveiled. I go back to the airbrush and using white ink, I just pump up the value on the parts I want to be illuminated. That's of course the little lamps on the outside, but also the entire floor. These hexagons are begging for a sci-fi ominous red glow, so that's exactly what we're going to do. I do a relatively even pass over the entire floor, but then I want each hex to glow a little. So on the second pass, I try my best to only hit the inside of each little section. It takes a bit of time, it's a fantastic and basically risk-free way to practice trigger control and accuracy with your airbrush. My airbrush, by the way, is the Iwata HP CS, which is a great all-around airbrush. Not the best for fine detail work, but it does everything I need it to. Would recommend. Once the values are set with white ink, it's super easy to just go off with some thin down color and really bring up that glow. For the little yellow lamps, I used a GW Contrast Yellow, and for the floor, I start with Contrast Blood Angels Red. FYI, in case you didn't know, Contrast paints through an airbrush is very nice. After the Blood Angels Red is down, the floor looks a little glowy, but I really want it to stand out and I'm feeling emboldened by all this airbrushing. So I go back and touch the center of each hexagon with the white ink again for extra glow. Once that's all down, it looks like absolute rubbish, but don't worry, Thin Down Fluor Red from Scale Color is here to save the day. I really love this paint for red lighting effects. It allows you to maintain the red color without going too far into orange or yellow, but still getting those upper values. The next step in making our glow effect cell is to actually just darken the interiors around it. I go over the interior walls with Null Oil through the airbrush, and the darker the walls, the better the red looks, so I do two or three layers. Next I go back to the flat black and just block in all the hex sort of web shapes and the cages for the exterior lights. Takes ages, but well worth it. I was actually almost going to leave it there, but then I remembered these. I bought these graffiti water slide decals, 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 decals. Anyway, I bought them ages ago and I'd almost forgotten about them, but this is the perfect excuse to bust them out. As well as just being generally super cool, the graffiti on the outside of the building is really going to help with the thematic contrast between a high-tech glowing and clean interior and the grimy, dirty streets of whatever cyberpunk city this building ends up a part of. 
Putting transfers on uneven surfaces is a whole nother kettle of fish, which is probably a bit too in-depth to go into in this video, but I'll be sure to make one on it at some point. The transfers can also tend to look kind of shiny and plasticky, and so the last step here is to go back and get some streaking grime on them. A bit of dirt and texture in the crevices really helps them look like they've been on the wall a while. Like I mentioned earlier, this piece is for Infinity the game, and I'm really stoked with how it's turning out. It fits the aesthetic perfectly of a slum in Paradiso, or even on one of the Nomad motherships. And that's it. This is a really good example of how with a few basic techniques, and maybe some like extra little spicy steps in there, you can get something looking really sick in a really short amount of time. Thanks for your eyeball time, I appreciate it, and I'll leave you with this sick cinematography of the finished piece. Bye!